Hello everyone, this is Mohammed Abdul Mukid. The title of our project is going to be the simulation of a banking queue system. My partner in this project will be Kamal Tapa. Now let's begin. The first thing we're going to look at is the project outline, which is going to be the first we're going to look at the project background, and then there's going to be the scope and objective and the model construction. And after that, Kamal is going to look at the model demonstration, animation, results, and the conclusion. Let's look at the project background in this case. The bank we are focusing is one of the largest banks of the United States of America, which is the Bank of America. And the branch we are focusing is will be the Netherlands Bank. Now, the Netherlands Bank of the Bank of America is one of the busiest banks in the Port Arthur and Beaumont area. Uh, according to our study, we have, we have analyzed that there has been a steady reduction of clients at the bank lately. And we're going to look at that problem. Now let's define the problem. There's been a long waiting queues and then there's been an overutilization of resources which has resulted in wasting of time and there's been a lot of customer dissatisfaction. Now let's look at the scope of the project. The banking, we are going to study the banking queue system inside the bank. We are not going to look at the ATM service because the, a, the ATM works on a different service time and because it, it works on a 24, it's a 24 hour process, which could, this could be an extended study of our project. The data we have is for seven days of bank. Next, we are going to look at the objective. The objective is like how long the clients spend in each queue inside the inside the bank and how which we have to find we're going to find how how much time which is the most congested area in the system and we're going to look at how di different ways to improve and different strategies we can apply to this first is to we're going to look at how to reduce the waiting time and the client cycle time now the, this means that the clients, how, how much time a client allows to a single resource, whether it could be the banker or a teller or the manager. We're going to look at how we can reduce that. And next, we can look at the optimum staffing level. The, the, uh, look, we're going to look at how much this, there's going to be different, uh, how much staff is required for a particular area. Now, let's look at the model construction. The entity over here is the bank clients. And we're going to look at the various resources. Let's look at, there are two lobby managers who are working in two different shifts. The first lobby manager arrives at 9 a.m. and works till 12 noon. And the second man, man, lobby manager takes over from 12 noon to till when the bank closes. The lobby manager checks in the arriving clients and verifies the identities and looks at the, and checks, checks them in and puts them in their respective queues. Now there are two tellers. The, the function of the teller is to deposit, transfer or transfer cash or deposit cash or we look in various identify various checks the two bankers here as well the bankers help in account opening debit cards and credit card issues and loans or if someone wants to apply a credit card or if they have someone having a fraud issues next we're going to look at the branch manager the branch manager supervises customer satisfaction and it makes make sure the bank is running in smooth uh, smoothly in all areas or if there's a special request by a client to meet the bank uh, the, the branch manager due to some uh, special uh, special request the bank manager the branch manager will meet the client now next let's look at the flowchart of the model we have here the first it, you can see the client are client are arriving here and they have to wait a certain amount of time before the, the cloud lobby manager comes and agrees them and checks in the system by verifying their various documents or ID, and then immediately puts them in a waiting uh, in, in a queue for the for the respective the person uh, whether they want to meet the teller or bank or the venture. Now suppose let's look in first if they want to meet if, if the client puts uh, if the lobby manager puts them in a uh, in a queue for the teller, there's a waiting time of for teller. And after the teller has processed the client, the client will move towards the exit. And the second option is to wait. If the, if the queue is for the banker, there's a waiting time for the banker. The banker will, after processing the client, or there's, a, there's an option whether the manager wants to meet the client or the client wants to meet the manager. If they want to meet the manager, there's an option again. Uh, the, the client moves towards the banker, which, which we can show from here, which, which can be seen here. 
I mean, if they don't want to meet the manager, they move towards the exit. Now, this is the third option where the customer client wants to meet the manager manager directly, and they have an option to do that. And then they meet, and then after meeting the manager, whether they want to see the banker banker or not depends on them. And if they want to see the banker, that the workflow is the the flow diagram is here. And they don't want to see the banker, they move towards the exit. This is a more this is our model construction. The model we have uh, here we have applied different stations, different routes, and we have uh, we have applied different decision modules. Now my friend Kamal will take over from here. Hi, my name is Kamal Tapa. Now I'm gonna discuss further into our project. So uh, the simulation we are considering is a terminating simulation, and we don't have a warm up period for this. The bank runs from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So the bank needs to consider the the unfinished working progress uh, that need, needs to be finished even after 3 p.m. For this, uh, we have introduced a cutoff logic that makes sure that the clients are not created after 9 a.m. And the introduction of the uh, terminating condition makes sure that all the unfinished or the work in progress are finished uh, even after 3 p.m. time frame. So let's go into the de model demonstration. So this is our model. Uh, this is our cutoff logic. So I'm going to show you the terminating condition we have introduced. So this is our terminating condition in which the the system will terminate after 3 p.m. and and all the working progress are finished. Let's run it and let's see the animation too. This is our animation. We can see the arrival station this is the exit station this is the lobby manager this is the branch manager this is the banker and this is the tailor so entities are coming and going into the different units let's see the output so total output is 88 So this is the model animation. I just showed you in the model demonstration as well. So let's get into the results. So what, what do the results show us? So the results show us that the number in is equal to number out, and this perhaps lay the our model is working perfectly, and the terminating condition is also working. So uh, in terms of waiting time, the Taylor unit has the highest number of waiting time, almost twenty five minutes whereas other units don't have the considerable amount of waiting time. Similar number in Q, uh, that Taylor unit has uh, almost four uh, person waiting in the Taylor unit, and other units don't have considerable amount of people waiting in the queue. Uh, similarly, the total cycle time in the system is about 45 minutes. So, so from this result, what we can conclude is that the bottleneck is in the Taylor unit. Let's go into the resource utilization. Uh, the bankers are utilized almost 50% of the time in the system, whereas the tailors are uh, utilized uh, up to 85% in the system. So we can see the uh, gap between the other units, which are below 50%, and the tailor unit, which is over 85% in the research utilization. So from this result, uh, we have uh, decided to compare two scenarios with the current model. The first scenario would be to add one tailor in the tailor unit. Similarly, the scenario two will be to add uh, one more tailor unit in the uh, uh, in the tailor unit and reduce one banker from the uh, banker unit. So the result from the output analysis was that the scenario of adding uh, one tailor versus the current model. Uh, the confidence interval doesn't include zero in it. This means that the two scenarios are significantly different from each other. Similar for the scenario two uh, versus our current model, the confidence interval doesn't include zero in this in this time too. So the two scenarios are significantly different from each other for this case also. Let's see the results we achieve from the process analyzer. So 
uh, for the scenario one of adding one more tailor we can see that the client cycle time is 28 minutes which is significantly reduced from the current model result of 42 minutes and the total number out is 89 similarly total waiting time in the tailor unit is 1.8 minutes in addition to this result we can see for the scenario 2 in which the client cycle time is 40 minutes which is greater than what we achieve in the scenario 1 however the waiting time in the tailor unit is 1.7 that's lower than what we achieve in the uh, first scenario so from this result we can we can uh, conclude that the scenario 1 of adding one tailor is uh, is a better uh, better choice to incorporate in the current model because the client cycle time is reduced significantly to 28 minutes to verify the results we achieved from the output analyzer and pan we decided to run the opquest optimization tool so basically we are focused to uh, minimize client cycle time and average waiting time in the teller queue so the controls will be teller and the bank resource and the responses will be client cycle time and waiting time in the uh, teller queue uh, similarly the objective would be to minimize the both both the client cycle time and the average waiting time in the teller queue and the constraint will be the total number of banker and tailor must be less than five and research bound is that the banker and tailor must be within one and three so let's see the results we obtained for the opquest optimization tool so for the first objective of minimizing the total cycle time we found the objective value to be 29 minutes when the banker number is two and the tailor number is three Similarly, for the objective second, to reduce the total number of people waiting in the uh, tailor unit, we found that the waiting time is 2.68 when the banker number is 2 and the tailor number is 3. So from all these three results, what we can conclude is that the, the three results support each other. Finally, uh, what we can conclude from our study is that adding one more tailor will significantly decrease the waiting time in the tailor queue as well as the overall cycle time. Thus, we recommend to add one more tailor in the tailor unit. Thank you.